UI windows are used to create a specific window and these allow for animations as well as audio. So here we have an example of a UI window on our inventory, as you can see here. So for a UI window we have a window name, which can be unique but doesn't necessarily have to be, uh, so we can actually find it through code if we would want to later on. We can hide the window on start and we can reset the position on start. This way, as you can see, the window is outside of my canvas right now. When I start the game, the inventory will be reset to its base position. So when I go in the game and I press I, it's actually right here. So as you can see, we can actually reset the window um, inside of the canvas once we start the game. This can actually be useful because that way you can design all of your windows outside of the canvas and when your game starts, they'll all be uh, moved back into the canvas. On top of that, we can block UI input. Currently, this is only used for controllers. So when this window is open or active, um, input can be blocked on other UI elements. So only uh, the input events will be registered on this specific window, which can be useful if you, for example, have a dialog, like um, I've got one right here. Once a dialog is visible, you don't really want other elements to receive input events. So if you block the UI input on this specific dialog, only this will receive the events and the others will actually ignore the events. And then we also have there we go, block player input. So player input is the player controller, which uh, blocks movement of the player. We have some animations that we can set here, show and hide animations, as well as show and hide audio clips. Then we have our actions, so here we can specify an action when the window is shown. So maybe we want to repaint something, or uh, well, whichever. And we can see some debug information if the window is hidden or not. And because it's now in the editor mode, it's considered hidden. But if we go in game, we can actually see if the window is considered visible or hidden. If we want to add animations, we need to add an animator controller here. So by default, or actually on this window, we have the inventory window controller. If I just open that up, you can see we have a show and a hide window animation. So now I can just attach my show and hide window animation here. Show window and hide window. And we can also add uh, some audio to it. I think we have a pop sound. And now when we start the game, we'll have a nice animation with a pop sound. In addition to that, this window actually already had a UI window input handler, so I'm just going to quickly create a new one and show you that as well. So here we have a simple UI window. I'm just going to place it here for a moment. And as you can see at the bottom, we have no input handler. You're not required to have one, but if you want to show the window on a key press, you actually want to add a window input handler. If you're using something like Rewired, you'll see a different input handler here as well, which you can use to um, use Rewired specific uh, input handling. In this case, we just have the normal input handler. And here we can specify a key code we would like to use to actually show this specific window. So let's just pick something like R. And then we can actually show and hide our window when we press R, which is right now mapped to two, action, two windows. In addition to the UI window, we can actually add a draggable window component, which allows us to drag this window around, um, just like the inventory and the others. And finally, you can actually add multiple UI window handlers, input handlers. So maybe you want to map, map it to R and, I don't know, a plus sign. So you can actually map multiple input handlers. You can have a draggable window and the UI window can have animations and events and whatnot.